nice and summery today. Now, right, how do I add people? Pool. Bloody hell, I'm searching. Aha, there we go. I... <laughs> Waiting for Paul. Hi, Lynn. Again. Hello. Yes. Yes. You right, Paul? Oh! I can't hear you, dude. Okay, then I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what was going on there. <laughs> oh, oh, you've been all right, man? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. A bit stir-crazy. Oh, I totally get what you mean, man. Totally get. Oh, I mean, I've been making sure I get up at 10 o'clock sharp just to watch this morning. Hey! <laughs> Fuck that Philip Schofield is a wanker. Hey! He's a nice guy, actually. Hey! <laughs> yeah, he was right. His hands were, like, huge, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my camera set up right. Does, uh, we have it falling over. Hey! That's all right. Well, I'm best <laughs> in a ring light. Oh! Ciao, yeah. you weren't wrong when you said we'd have a load of Italian. Yeah. Well, how it started is that uh, <laughs> back, back maybe 10 years ago, when we made the documentary uh, <clears throat> hey, with me, John and Chopper going to <laughs> Scotland to find a campsite. <laughs> yeah. Now, that was, somebody uploaded that as three men with Tourette's going on holiday, and then Ooh. it was translated into different languages. Well, the Italian... Hey, <clears throat> still on. The Italian right. translation is pretty humorous, and a lot of people started contacting me. And that, I mean, on a, they're all pretty respectful, and they, you know, they, they text, uh, "Hi guys," they text my ticks back to me, and but it's you know, like Donacia, Medusa, Sesso, Castle. Hey, <clears throat> so there's loads of different. Ones. But it's helped because it, you know it spreads awareness anyway. So yeah, I mean. Gets you across the globe as well, man. <laughs> Very true. You know, oh. I was in Edinburgh uh, doing some photography. Nice. I mean, it's the nearest nearest city to me, so uh, it was the uh, Fringe Festival, and these three guys walked up to me from America and said, "Are you the guy of Free Men with Tourette's going on with me?" Man, <laughs> <laughs> I'd yeah. take a glass of first like this. Go. Yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been mistaken for um, The Undateables, a show I've never been on before. Right. Um, <laughs> they walk past, oh, and I think they meant to say, employable well, me. Ooh. Yeah. But I've walked past them, and oh, they've literally gone, it's the couple, it's the couple from uh, from The Undateables. And me and Charlie <laughs> looked at each other like, nah. The Undateables? Like, <laughs> oh. Employable me. So, Hey, with me. And that's so I've, I've just been uh, <clears throat> looking, trying to look, look at back at things I've done, you know, for raising awareness and stuff. And I've posted yeah. a few things. But it's a long month, is May to June. For, uh, <clears throat> hey. <clears throat> right, I'm going to try and suppress. I know I shouldn't, but... <clears throat> Completely up to you, man. <laughs> yeah, it blocked me... Uh, <clears throat> Lots of my thought process as well, but yeah, no, you know, like for raising awareness, and I think this is a top idea that you've got uh, going on here because it's not only is it going live now, <clears throat> but you, you know, you're going to put it out on YouTube, aren't you, as well? Yeah, it's going to go on YouTube <laughs> after non edited, lot just done, and then goes, goes right up, raw, and then anyone that wants to look at it and wants to get some sort of feedback or. <laughs> feel that they're not alone then yeah. and are you are you uh allowing people to ask questions ryan yeah if people want to ask questions that they can um right can i I'll just let me to all the my, my italian followers if, if any of you are following this guy here up above is ryan and what me and ryan have both got in common is we've got tourette syndrome uh we've both got coprolalia 
uh, and all the other stuff that goes with it. But the reason why me and Ryan know each other is that we both did a documentary called <laughs> Employable Me. Now, I was in the first series and Ryan was in the second series. So that's how we met. And we've got a mutual friend, the lovely Nancy Doyle, who yes. uh, is an absolutely fantastic soul. But Nancy. Nancy, I mean, is, I don't know, I think the purest form of a person that I've probably ever met in my life, to be completely honest. Oh, she has the right idea, um, trying to get, like, more awareness of neurological and mental health um, recognised in a workplace more than just yeah. it being recognised for the customers. And as I only said last time, oh, on my last live and the last video, there isn't a lot of awareness for neurological mental health within a workplace it is mainly just for customers and that's yeah. that, that's the bad bit so i think i think with a mental health issue is that, that people that all the it's when people have got mental health issues now yeah. uh, i get i go into schools a lot and i'm talking to people in universities and different things and pe i always find People asking me a question, why do you want to label somebody? Mm. And I'm saying this, you know, getting a diagnosis isn't a label. Right? Ooh, it's not no. a label. It's an understanding, it's a name, it's a mitigation of what it is. Now, when I were a kid, I obviously displayed <coughs> tics. And I obviously yeah. had to act back then. And I've got ADHD and OCD and a, f and a few spectrum issues. But I didn't get a diagnosis. Right, and we were punished for displaying <clears throat> things in our condition. Now, I, I, I firmly believe that because going through the fifties, sixties, I was born in the sixties. This is why we've got so many, so many mental health issues now, is because people weren't allowed to discover who they were and exactly. be who they were. I mean, like um, schizophrenia if as soon as you heard voices that was it you were locked in a nut house less than a century ago is it's, it's a lock but it's it's still a long way to go with it i think with with, yeah. with things like that. what's this it's so great you guys are spreading awareness like this i'm part of a group on here on instagram on tiktok called twitch teams and we're trying to spread more awareness about your threats as well our threats as well awesome well done Ooh. I know, I know what it means. I can't say that very loud, quickly. Twitch teams, lot. Um, they're on TikTok and all that lot. So, like, they, right. it's a group of youngsters that are trying to raise awareness on other platforms and social media and that, which is good. Well, John, big respect. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so it's just getting the word out there. I mean, it's, it's trying to get out there. So, I mean, I've been just at the moment mitigating myself to my flat and my turtles. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is kind of something else to concentrate on for me. Ooh. Yeah. So I think, I think the difficult thing I've struggled with, Ryan, is uh, the uncertainty of lockdown, what's going to happen, and uh, and things that are, I, I, I got some advice off a friend saying, look after the things that you can control like my yeah. family, uh, my health, but the things that are beyond my control, like when the lockdown's going to end, you know how severe it's going to be. What's the point of stressing about stuff like that? Because we, we can't change it. We can't do anything about it. So what I, I thankfully, because I've got ADHD, my mind's like <laughs> all over the show with ideas. And I don't think I've ever grown up. I've, <laughs> I've, got, a, I've got an 80 year old face, a 40-year-old body and a six-year-old mind. <laughs> I'm always thinking of, with the kids, you know, games to play. Uh, so I set up a circuit training, a mini strongman circuit training in the garden. We're lucky enough to have a garden. And, you know, it's keeping them entertained, which is keeping me occupied. <laughs> Give me oh, peace as well. Oh, yeah. I guess that's the good thing about the kids. They can go off and take themselves away. Whereas dealing with a turtle rescue, I've just got them constantly looking at me for food like I have right behind the camera now. Yeah. <laughs> have you, uh, how, how's it gone with, you know, since the lockdown, have you been, have you took any more 
into care or um we've only taken one in uh, yeah. and that was because she was found in a wrap she was found wrapped at, <laughs> wrapped in a plastic bag in london All in right. a pond so it was sort of like a, an emergency like yeah. drop off and then people not going out they won't be observing as much and no uh, so it's believed to me why people let them escape you know not let them escape but you know, can't deal with them anymore, and then set them free. Yeah, people buy them this it. small, and then don't realise they get to yeah. this size. And I mean, that's that's the worst of it. To be completely honest, is that they don't, and pet shops wouldn't tell them. And now, now some of them are illegal. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, um, and are now being euthanised for for even being alive, which is uh, not a nice thing. Woo! No. Um, <laughs> They, they they come to me. Oh, <laughs> not it. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, the lockdown is just. I've only just started to venture out into the community gardens. Oh, yeah. like to have a nice community around here. Everyone looks out for each other. But venturing into town is too much for my head at the moment. I, I think I don't know if it's the queues or just like the urge to do certain ticks, cough, sneeze. Yeah. Shout things out. It just becomes too much and then your head just gets caved in. And yeah, it's right, and it, it's that social anxiety. I mean, it's something that we 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 so you know <clears throat> we, we we were troubled with anyway. It's the social anxiety what is what fuels our ticks, what makes our ticks worse when we go outside. Uh and it's only increased by I know I've I've I went out, I had to go out, my father broke down. And we had to get him, his tire repaired on his car. And the guy's walking up to me and he's, he's like coming to take something out of my hand. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> and it's like throwing it at him. Yeah. And, uh, but after that, honestly, I got home and I were absolutely wiped out because the anxiety had taken its toll on me. Ooh, that's me, bum. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but, like, ooh, so... Yeah, I've just, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> I think everybody is. It's just a little bit harder for, for people like us. Ooh. Um, I got some dirty looks when shopping the other day because I have a tick where I clear my throat and everyone's looking at me and thinking oh, I've had the virus. But the thing yeah. is that people people out there have asthma. People out there have allergies. Yeah. Ooh. And at the end of the day, nobody really should be needing to explain themselves. As long as you're... I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, that. Um, yeah, well, as, long as, as long as you're careful. I, th I think I think we end up feeling because uh, we know the ticks. We, yeah. We've got that look that we feel there. It's, I mean, the ticks are going to be inappropriate and the, to whatever situation they're in. Uh, you know, like being in Tesco shouting as the price, and you know, it's not an not an offensive tick, but it's an oh, inappropriate. But I, this is one thing that I say in class, right? The, there's no cure for our condition. Nope. There's no specific medication. The medications that are out there usually have a lot of bad side effects. So why not just let us be who we are? Exactly. If, I think the only medication that's helped me massively is probably for gabbling, but that's to take the anxiety away from everything. Ooh, and then that allows me to then <coughs> manage my tips myself if you kind of know what I mean a more easier pace and and that's what I kind of like about for gabbling the other stuff I've had has made my tongue swell up like a dog like mm. swell up but I mean it kind of made my tongue I don't know like when you like tense your arm muscle you tongue oh uh, yeah nice. funny looking back at it but it wasn't funny at the time because I was sticking yeah. my head out of my dad's window like a dog so <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had a lot of antipsychotics and, and none of them have done me any good. They work for some people and I think I never, I always say taking medication is a personal thing. And yeah. for, that, for adults, it's a personal thing, a personal choice. Uh, for children, I, th I honestly think that mums, children and doctors should talk together and go through the pros and the cons, uh, even though, you know, as parents, you want to do right by your kids. I, I honestly yeah. think that the conversation that kids should should you know should join in with you know how would you how would you like us to do this? I mean, I remember talking to somebody 
Ooh. and the child said to him, why have you Why have you not given me medication? I've done like six years of my life and, I'm, and you could have given me medication. And then I heard some other, another parent another time saying, the kid were going, why did you give me medication? I've lost so many years of my life because I've been on this. So at the end of the day, it's a personal thing. The stuff for anxiety, like you said, the, the tablets, the SSRIs and different things, you know, I, I take anti-anxiety tablets and they just take the edge off. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think sometimes the edge taken off is what most, what, what somebody like me needs, <laughs> especially like even you. Oh, um, I mean, because it also helps with my dissociative identity disorder where I've got like a weird other person living in my brain. Um, oh, uh, I've got OCD um, when it comes to my animals, especially, mm -hmm. and tidying. Um, and I don't, I don't have so much ADHD, but I have FND, which is functional, functional neurological disorder, which is where my legs go. And then that, yeah. another add-on threats. And it's just like, I don't think people see Tourette's. people see Tourette's as just this one linear line. It's not. It literally, yeah. Like the FND is a, is a is a strange one because uh, my one of my consultants, my consultant, lovely lady, but just when I when we spoke about, I get extreme fatigue. Uh, I get to the point where it's not a seizure, but I can't I can't move, and my yeah. words go slow. Uh, I feel like my mouth's gone all numb. Um, I dislocate my knees, I dislocate my arms, and okay, well you're doing fine now, so you just carry on. And it's like, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to collect diagnosis here. I'm just, yeah, I understand what is going on with me, but you know, then I can deal with it better. I mean, if yeah. things are happening and you don't know why they're happening to you, that's the most distressing thing. And I think as adults, we're in a really unique position and I tell you some of the stuff that we're not blessed hey uh, it's not a blessing from God but we're in a unique position where we can articulate how we feel to other people to to kids hey and to parents teachers yeah. and like yeah ruh, 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 pop, pop. Ooh, my whereas watch a lovely lady <laughs> I, 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 whereas I think um, I think with kids like they they don't especially younger like early teens yeah. they don't really know how to express themselves as much and they, they obviously become easily more embarrassed with oh with the tracks yeah. and with the ticks or whatever else is going on so a lot of them do end up suffering in silence and oh okay i guess this is kind of why i've done this to sort of like show that oh, even if they don't have to if they don't want to speak out yet just search it and then be greeted with our gorgeous faces. <laughs> oh, it's a, I mean, it's a, for, for them, it's a difficult thing because, I mean, they're dealing with adults and an adult says to you, that's not a tick. Uh, you've got to directly challenge the adult teacher, whoever it is, saying, well, actually, it is a tick. Uh, and, and I think they've got, a, they've got a hard deal, really, with, with things like that. And, I'm, you know, speaking to people who, who just would rather suppress than let the ticks out. So this is what I put to these teachers at a school. The last talk I did in a school, I said, uh, is someone picking in class that bad? That bad that we have to make them feel guilty? That Ooh. bad that we have to make them suppress? And one of the teachers said, it's a distraction. And I said, well, let, let me put it this way. Classrooms are full of distractions. People moving the chairs, people coughing, like you said before, people sneezing, people dropping the pens, kids farting. But the thing is, we, everybody can identify those distractions. So why not? Let's identify what the ticks are and understand that it's threats, and then they no longer become a distraction then. So exactly. it, it's just a different viewpoint that I thought I'd put out there to, because, because then if the kids don't react to the ticks anymore, then the guy who's ticking, isn't, or the lass who's ticking, aren't that much under pressure. So, woo, woo, woo. hey, Ooh. you know, baby Jesus died to save our fish. He did. Ooh. With some bread. <laughs> I do a lot of religious <laughs> um, <laughs> and 
it's like this is the other thing. It's like I I can have a laugh. We can have a laugh with what comes out of our mouths or what happens, mm-hmm. and oh, it's but we know when to have a laugh with it, and then we know when to sort of step back and go actually. I'm not having a laugh with myself because it's getting too much or I'm not going to carry on laughing at said person threats because you can tell it's getting too much for their head. So, and, and that's why I don't really go to many Tourette meetings anymore is because it was literally like a hell on earth for my head. Yeah. The first two times I went was... Yeah. Ooh. Too, too, too much. Yeah, too much. It was like just... Drilling in, I mean, I was self-conscious at the fact that I was ticking, even though I was in a room full of other people, Tourette's, and then I was self, as well as that, was self-conscious of me ticking, was making that person over there tick, or that person over there, and then ticking was making me tick, and it's just, oh, it was just getting, it was absolutely manic. (laughs) Very very tiring, I think, uh, and and I agree with it, with the picking other people's ticks up, and all, just to like, give parents a bit of uh, reassurance when they take the kids to these Tourette support group meetings, they might pick up a tick, but they Ooh. usually don't last very long. Uh, no. Just a repeating the tick, repeating the tick. It's not deeply embedded, because I know some folk think, oh, it might make my child worse. Well, it yeah. won't be, because I honestly think <clears throat> genetically what's in place inside our brains, if we're predisposed to go full blown, as in coprolalia, echolalia, all all the all the things that, <clears throat> then you you will go to that. But if you're not predisposed to that, then yeah. you know, if that makes sense, and if I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. But oh, I'm not a not, no, I, mean, I, <laughs> I mean, like so. Like, I completely agree that a kid that's probably never had coprolalia before will go to a Tourette's meeting and probably pick up. Something like yeah. So, but they'll only do that if it if the predispositions are. I think yeah. You know what I mean? Because you can't catch Tourette's, can you? You can't. No, you can't not, uh, God, I look a fat bastard. Ooh. So I <laughs> a neurologist. Ooh, he didn't tell me I had Tourette's at the age of fifteen. He told me when I was twenty-one. Ooh, twenty-one because he didn't want to put the knowledge in my head. So he kind of kept it bottled and stored away because he was like, "It's going to become a day where you did turn up at my at my office door again." And oh, I did. <laughs> oh, I turned up naked. Um, and yeah. my ball beep and an edge jog. <laughs> <laughs> that would be spiky. Um, <laughs> I got this book today, by the way. Ah, oh, Johnny Vegas. And he's kindly signed it for me. Not if you can read it. Keep on uh, raising awareness for it. Oh, you're awesome. Nice one, so. I see. That's not as exciting as the book I've got on order. <laughs> what? Uh, the, uh, no! I don't know. It's not that one. Um, I'm too knowledgeable for that one. Uh, <laughs> Never me. I can put my hand behind my head and go like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, oh, I mean, I've, I've got the real life, the real life of Mary Jane Kelly, which was the last victim of the Jack the Ripper Canonical Five. All right, right. Uh, to have been done by a great nephew, so like or great great nephew. So I need a book to read in the summer. I mean, I finished the Rise of the Dinosaur ones, and oh, that's given me well, an insight into evolution a bit more. I'm not. A, I'm not a great reader. I like reading Ooh. biographies, autobiographies. Uh, but of comedians, uh, Norman Wisdom. Uh, that was a, I read that one. That were good, and I, I, I like comedians. I like to see everything uh, because I always think that uh, <clears throat> a lot of us guys with Tourette's, we've got that comedic. I know my tics are always, you know, they've got a spin on them. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in that. There's one book that I'm interested in reading because another thing I like is Japanese culture uh, and history. Uh, now there's, a, there's a guy called the Limehouse Samurai, and he's an English guy. Uh, I think he was called Adams, and by chance he ended up in Japan in 1517 bow and arrow, you know, way back in time, and worked his way up through to become a samurai. True story. 
Uh, and uh, if I can find that book, I'd love to read that book. Hey! What's the book called? He, he's, he's, well, the, he's referred to in history as the Limehouse Samurai, which means I think Limehouse is in London, some area in London. Yeah. And uh, he became a, I don't know, either a commander on a ship or something, or then ended up in Japan. So, hey. I, wonder they, I wonder if they've got versions, not versions, but um, books of it on Amazon. All right, yeah, it might be. Get out of it. Wanker. Uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been written into a TV thing, and it was called Shogun. And it was played, somebody, a guy called Richard Chamberpot, Chamberlain, uh, played the part back in the 70s or 80s. So, quite good. That's where I learned all my Japanese from, my Tourette's Japanese. <laughs> well, from watching and, uh, yeah. and, and interested in their culture. So, do you know what their culture on Tourette's is over in Japan? No, no idea. No idea. Uh, See, I'm, I'm interested in all that. I want to know what it's like in different countries, because I only know mainly about Europe, if not mainly just about England, and then America. And I'm, all I know is America's a little bit more advanced Ooh. in technology and everything yeah. I, I, I think in every culture Ryan there's, it all depends what people's backing is uh, yeah. you know you know even in western culture you've got people who are deeply religious uh, yeah. and they, they look for understanding that way uh, sometimes they're offended uh, and I think these I don't know they, we, we carry shame don't we you know oh, yeah. we're, in a, we're in a very advanced society and yet as individuals we carry shame uh, with our tics uh, and the fact that it's funny because <clears throat> we, you were, talk, we were talking about humorous things and things this the, the weekend we've just gone past right I, I, I've been ticking motor tics and I couldn't walk I absolutely knackered my back up and my legs and I was in just so much pain yeah. and uh, it's like I view that as my weakness with my condition. And when I'm out, I don't want to, I mean, I'm 57, right? And I don't want to look vulnerable when I'm out. I don't mind people looking at my tics, my vocal tics, but as a, as a, I don't know. We have to travel, when we travel on public transport, when we're out in public, there's yeah. people who will take advantage. I remember a guy Ooh. followed me, uh, were following me down the road, and I knew were following me. And he'd seen me ticking while I was sat down. As soon as I got up, he got up. We went around the corner, and I just thought, right, here we go. I'm going to, someone's going to mug me. So as he walked around the corner, I preempted, and I said, listen, mate. I said, I don't have a watch. I said, I've got a phone. I've got some money, and you're having none of them. And he went, oh, 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 oh okay, right. So I said, so just do one, right? Now, he just perceived me as being somebody vulnerable who he could. But it, it, is, it is a thing that's in my head. I don't, I don't ever want to appear... Vulnerable with my condition. It's one of my greatest fears. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I, I always put up. I don't know if it's like a front, but a mask. Ooh, but it's, it's like, I'm no different to the next man. I'm not as vulnerable as most people try to make you out to be. Or, yeah. it, and that's another part of the stigma as well. As people do think you swear, you can make noises. You must be a bit not right in the head. Well, that's true to an extent. I'm not okay in the head, but I'm not. <laughs> You're fucking better than some. <laughs> not a tick, but it's a true tick. Hey, thank you. Um, but like, um, yeah, I can still, I can still look after myself and defend myself. So, catchy team with that one again. Wish someone came to my school. Yeah, well, listen, get in touch. And after this is all over, Twitchy teams, we uh, more than happy. I know Ryan or myself or there's lots of other people. We've got a massive big network around the UK of friends, which is fantastic. Mm. Isn't it, Ryan? Yeah, and I've got, I've got so, so, I find oh. it fulfilling as well, the school things. I got into it through my mate, Johnny D, Johnny Davidson. Yes. Uh, he, he took me along to a couple of things and I never, ever thought I'd be able to do any public speaking. And... Uh, Hi, I'm fine, thank you. From hi, Alberto. Oh, smiley face. Well, get in touch with us, either one of us anyway, and we'll see if we can sort something out. Oh, Yana. You know, the, the worst 
thing that I've ever had is people requesting or commissioning work. Yeah. Do you know what I said to them? It's Go not Kerry Walkie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, I mean, it's not. It's, I, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, happy birthday. Fuck you. Like, yeah. oh, happy birthday. Your mum's vagina is. And yeah. I, Very fat. Like, oh. <laughs> um, like, I don't, I don't get why people think that we oh. can. We're not drag apps or anything like that that's going to... They like your tattoo. Thank you. They take ages to do, by the way, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a very patient tattoo artist, and he's very good. He, he, like every the guy that did them. this, uh, it's called Jimmy, and massive, massive power lifter. And I said, I'll move, you know, and he went, no, you'll not. <laughs> 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 Got me a lock. Hey, and i tell you something. The rest of my body were moving, but my arm never moved, so... Ooh. Yeah, Jimmy, 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 good tattooist from Middlesbrough, superb tattooist, so. Nice. I've been for a while, though. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, thing... power sort of gives me a break, we, and then he goes out for a cigarette, we have a drink, and then we can't crack People say, on. how can you get tattoos done? Now, the, one of the best things with Tourette syndrome is distraction. Hey! And there's no better distraction than that someone sticking nine needles. or ten noodles in your arm. <laughs> That's exactly what I've said, and I like the feeling, because it gives my brain something to do, and, like, I like the feeling of vibration. Woo! Uh, Sweet baby, Jesus. I've been breaking uh, muscle pummeler, and I put it on my leg and that whenever my FND's playing up to try and relax my brain that way, or I've got, uh, I've even got a bas uh, back massager, that I'd like, if I feel, a, like, a tick attack coming on, or oh, something, okay. like, Heavy, I just put that on. I'm just sat there and like, Did you end up getting a weighted blanket? Uh, a heated, weighted blanket, yeah, too heavy. I mean, especially this time of year, hot. Well, I mean, to be truthful, the yeah, I know, I know about the heat, but the the, the fantastic, the uh, it's, it's worth the investment. Uh, there's one last from Manchester Supports Group who actually makes them. So oh, yeah. uh, I'll, put, I'll put you in contact with her. But they're not that hot because they're, it's just, they're not thick, they're just, they're heavy. Yeah. So the air gets in between them. But I, it's, it's something of feeling pressure. And, uh, and it, you know, it helps me to get off to sleep. You're not meant to sleep with your mum, though, but... Uh, so <laughs> I've got to go to bed like that. Oh, which oh, nah. <laughs> I mean, we've had, to res we've had to change to our summer duvet, as we call it, because yeah. like... Way it's been way too hot. You got deep so, on. I'm trying everything to cool the flat down. Oh, to keep yeah. the heat out because the heat. Man, you got all the tropical tanks, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, so, like all the tanks, are, like, like you said, they're open top because obviously they've got the light bulbs and in that for yeah. the turbos. Good thing, and so oh, this time of year, I can unplug water heaters. Right, <laughs> electricity. <Nice. laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it's a dehumidifier and fan. It. Well, I haven't got the fan on just yet because it just mess with the microphone. But <laughs> oh, because oh, my trusty com computer is the, the fan's always going on that now. So, uh, I'm going to say something to you then. Sorry, so, no, 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 right, just gone. That's that's my brain for you. I don't know whether it's an old age thing or uh, ADHD. My brain. I get dissociative amnesia. So I like forget things, or I forget days on end sometimes, and it's yeah. Right. right. So I'm thinking things that help, things that help me, are being creative. Yeah. Uh, for one, so my photography. Yeah, everybody knows I do photography. Thinking about images, taking a camera out, and it just puts me in a different zone. Number two, the other. Another thing, which is, is doing the gym. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. I'm not kidding you. I can be so down, so weary of my condition, and I come off, and the serotonin in my brain's wazzing round, and it just gets me through to another day, you know. Yeah. I absolutely uh, love going for a run. <laughs> yeah. You know, that caring factor as well, like, and you've, you'll find this looking after your rescue turtles, uh, I mean, the fact that you're doing good to another creature or to a human being, 
Uh, and I, it's funny because when we're helping each other with uh, other people who've got Tourette syndrome or other issues, it doesn't have to be a massive big gesture. It can just be being there to listen to somebody talk. Exactly. And it might not want all answers. of those people need. The strongest man sometimes needs an ear to listen to. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, oh, it's, I'm very black and white. <laughs> so when people yeah. come to me, they, they're, oh, like, oh, so-and-so, this, <laughs> and I'm very much like, yeah, get on yourself, dickhead. Yeah, but not get, like, <laughs> if they're really down, like, I'll help them out, but, oh, like, I'll sit there and, uh, I feel really bad. Well, what did you do last night? Oh, I drank a whole bottle of wine to myself. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> come around my house moaning about that. Like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when they're in, really in need, yeah. you know, that, that's, and I think that's the thing that's most important, isn't it? That you, you've got that ability and that empathy. Uh, yes. That you care about other people. And I think that's so important. I find lots of people with uh, neurological conditions uh, people say, oh, they lack empathy. They don't lack empathy at all. They, they're, they're more akin to understanding because of yeah. the position that they've been, been in. Uh, so, you, you know. I, yeah. I don't think it's so much of lacking empathy. It's more of, like you say, it's knowing when empathy is given. But it needs to be given. And I think we know, because we don't want to sit there and be given empathy. I know I don't half the time. Yeah. And, like... Ooh. So, you know when to kind of stop, like like yeah. being overbearing with it, and yeah. most people would be that whole go too much with empathy, and then suddenly it becomes very, um, it's very sympathetic, condescending, and very. Do you know what I mean? It's like and I'm sat there, and I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, right, next, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got a massive big blue bottle in our front room. Hey, oh, no. who's, sending us, who's sending us love now? I know, loads oh. of people. Can we not tell? Oh, I, 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 it doesn't let me know who's actually sending the love hearts on here. Well, that but, dude, that's Italian and that says shit with sugar. Hey, which was one of my ticks. In the documentary. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak Italian, but I know. Far from Hey. Mm, my favourite tick I've ever had is when I was talking to my mum and I literally just turned around and said, you've got crickets on your clip. Clip. No, and she literally looked at me like, did How you just you say know? that? And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, wonder sometimes where they come from, you know. Uh, it's oh. the ability... Well, we, we know, but the ability, there's no filter there, is there? So, and I, th I honestly think that we never forget any words or any information ha, that, that we hear or see or read. It's all yeah. stored in our brain, but the we thing is a lot of the time we can't recall it. But with Tourette's, there's no filters in the way to stop us recalling things. There so is. I think it's, it's like our brain has this magical ability of like piecing together the most random words. To complete a full sentence, or like just come like I don't know wherever my first proper tick vocal tick was, and that was spider's bounce. <laughs> like, um, hey, man was dead, and then dead in, our man was Titty Bum Bum or Frank and Boots. Ooh. I think Titty Bum Bum was the first offensive one that I came out with. I my Tourette's helps me when I'm doing quizzes because I'm pretty. The first answer that comes into my head, I'll say it. And I'll be right. But yeah. the only trouble is, I'm no good in the pub team because yeah. I'll shout it. <laughs> exactly. So, do you feel like you, you, you can hold on to a lot more knowledge than most people? Because yeah. I feel like I constantly need to learn something new every day. And then, even though it may seem very small, oh, I will remember that in years to come. Yeah. And well, I remember we're doing this pub, this quiz, and they said, uh, which. Uh, which is a famous cyclist who won so many awards and then got all uh, his, his stuff taken off him because he, he got found that he was taking drugs. And I went, Stretch Armstrong! <laughs> and it was Lance Armstrong, the answer, but... Came <laughs> <out>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, and if I get the answer right, I'll shout it out, so that's no good. But we, right. the gala weekends, when we have them weekends, which you and your partner will have to come to when yes. we get back again, uh, we, uh, we, a good friend of ours, Tommy Trotter, passed away, and we've, we've run a, a quiz, which he used to do quizzes for us, in honour of his name, and, we, and John bought a fantastic trophy, big silver trophy. Um, but it, it's, it, it's fun. Uh, but it's frustrating because we everybody's shouting out all the answers to the yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah because yeah, I'll have to see if I can get a turtle babysitter for that when when COVID and that's all over. <laughs> yeah, I mean I mean unfortunately we we missed the beginning this year and I'm hoping everything will be back on track for October this year. Uh, but it's like three days <clears throat> amongst other people. And um, because it's a residential, some people yeah. stay in the centre, some people stay in bed and breakfast. You can pick and choose. You can walk out, there's safe rooms, uh, you can go to quiet rooms. So the pressure isn't on yeah, all the time. And it's so, it's so beneficial, Ryan, honestly, because you you meet you meet people who you're going to have lifelong friendships with, you know, yeah. you become like, like family. And it, it, it's dead good. Uh, and I'm missing them all at the moment. You know all the ones that we usually I, see. So. I bet, oh. man. Like I'm, my sister was due like yesterday for her baby. Oh and, man! Like she's not given birth yet. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be induced right. in first, but it's just knowing that I've missed that last vital three months of her pregnancy. Watching my like her balloon. Like I know she's yeah. older than me, but Ooh. yeah. Oh. It's been, you got bigger tits. <laughs> the, uh, like, kind of breastfeeding. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah. sorry, Ryan Christian. That That's was a tip. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I know. I, I seen your post the other day that you would. It wasn't necessarily to do with the pregnancy, but I noticed your post that how much you miss your sister. Oh yeah, I miss my mm -hmm. big sister's my world, man. She's literally my rock. I tell her more things than I do my own parents. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's, it's just that missing that closeness of being able to just have that freedom to go and talk to them, you know, yeah. face to face. And, and, and touch is such an amazing thing, you know. My parents are two doors down and we've got to look at them over the side of a fence. My mum's poorly at the moment, really, really crook. And you, you just want to give them a hug when you yeah. see them. And, you, you know, just anyway. There. We, but it's positive. Ooh, we're, we're gonna get there, and that, yeah. that's if people stop being stupid and making large gatherings because of their conspiracy theory brains. And <laughs> oh, I'm brainwashed by the government. Um, but guys, stay safe and wear a condom. I mean, ooh. a mask. Wear <laughs> <laughs> a condom mask over your mouth. Yeah, my partner Charles said that he needs to get like massive, like extra large ones. Yeah. Put all over himself. Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> but so, um, yeah, I think filming that's on the, the things or did anybody talk about other documentary and stuff? Um well, I'm doing something for Australia Fox FM on Friday morning. Nice. Um and that's really about it at the moment. It's not much more i mean I'm, i still want to do that thing where we do go like we like cause i spoke to you about in the past where we do go yeah. abroad oh and we have a look at how Tourette's is treated in different countries and how we well, can i reckon that that's that was nicked off three men with Tourette's going on it had to be stolen with gino fred and gordon yeah, oh, yeah. i mean that oh well, look they ain't got Tourette's, but they're uh, they've uh, got um they've got the, they've got Sheffin in common so that's all good yeah. <laughs> Well, it's funny because I remember when, when we made the documentary, it, there was somebody spoke about it then. A lovely lady called Dora said, you know, something could be done, but uh, not everybody w were willing to get involved. But I reckon it would be fantastic, uh, a way of raising awareness, as well as meeting other people from, you know, seeing how it's accepted in other cultures. It'd be a good uh, and I mean, I know it sounds really, but this is, this is the paranormal or the ghost investigator in me where i like being ooh, pushed to my boundaries edge um <laughs> i if i go to a country and say it's seen as a really bad 
mental health disorder to the point they're put in an asylum. Yeah. But one night, I'd love, I know it sounds really horrible, I'd want to go and see how to experience that. Because yeah. I want to be able to take that away and go, well, this isn't how they shouldn't be treated at all. Like, instead of just, oh, taking that as face value, I want to experience what they're, they're probably going through, which isn't, which I know won't be nice, but I can't say that they're doing the wrong thing until I've experienced it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, in our history, we're not that far away from uh, people. You know, I've, I've got friends who, who've been locked up. I, I think I spent about three weeks uh, what we what they called something psychosomatic, which now I, I know was a tick. Yeah. Uh, I kept collapsing. Uh, I kept going into spasm with my back, and then they just said, "You've got nothing wrong with you." And anyway, I got locked up for uh, in one of the local hospitals for about three weeks, three mo- three weeks, four weeks, and put on medication just to. But I mean, it weren't weren't like in in a a mental health institute, but yeah, you what they classed as psychosomatic which you know not not real illness but i've had friends who've been locked up for six months uh and this is in recent history in the uk so i mean it would be good uh it'd, it'd be good for people in other countries to the fact that to speak out about it it's great is yeah that's the last word i was talking to you about uh tourette's teacher natalie she's got a documentary oh, yeah. from, and she's on insta as tourette's teacher and she's a top Top girl, honestly, uh, extremely clever. You know, really good at her job. Uh, yeah. But we ticks on bit out and getting out there, being loud and proud. So uh, I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, I had privilege to be part of. I think I've, I'm out of a, a thirty seconds of the documentary uh, <laughs> when she came up here. So Ooh. when it's out, I'll let you know. So hey, 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 <laughs> hey. So go on. Uh, no, I was just going to say, please do for letting me know when it's out. I think we've got about five minutes left. Because right. Instagram you has an hour's cap of a live, and I don't want it to suddenly go to the countdown, and we're still yeah. in the middle of like a conversation and that. But like, it's it's nice that there is other people like yourself that will be willing to talk on platforms yeah. like this. And, ooh, I mean, I'm seeing a load of gay comments, but I'm ignoring those. But it's nice to see the comments that we've, <laughs> that we've helped people. He's not gay. No, but his leg is. That used to be one of my favorite pics as well. I'm French and I've got a gay leg. I even have a t-shirt made up like that. And I have lots of people going, gay leg. And I'm like, wouldn't you like to know? Mm. Uh, no, I'm- Merchandise I can sell sort of like, promoting the awareness of Tourette's without it being that sort of I've got Tourette's fuck cunt sort of shit yeah. like that I don't find helpful at all no. I mean uh, I'd, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine line that when, I, when, I'm, when, I, when, I, when I'm relating about my tics, I put hashtag my Tourette's yeah. and the only reason I do that is because our, ter- our condition is as individual as we are. Yes. And not everybody with Tourette swears or says, well, we know that. Okay. It, stands, it stands in the uh, the books at 10%, but I've, I've got a feeling through doing a bit of collaboration with a friend of mine in Canada uh, that I think we got it up to about 25%. Okay. That might have, yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know, but I don't think any research has been done on it properly. Uh, but it, there's, the other thing is, you have to take into account all the other people who've got Tourette's that haven't been diagnosed. Exactly, and they, they just, like, Tourette's can range from the smallest thing to the most outlandish thing going. So, yeah, that is, that's possible. I, I was 46 when I got diagnosed, so. I remember, mm-hmm. like, when I watched your Employable Me program and all that lot, like when they said how old you were when like you had been officially diagnosed, and then I think it was your mum that said on the program that looking back throughout the years, maybe it was there, but they couldn't really say for certain. And then it's just, like I said, there's it, still a lot of work that needs to be done, but we're getting there. <laughs> oh, naughty, boy, naughty boy syndrome. 
<laughs> well, that's what it is, yeah. Working, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we... It's course. funny because I'd, uh, I, I, I thought, should, should I, as an adult, should I stay quiet, you know, in the background? Oh, yeah. No, I don't. I'm just thinking about parents might be worried or, or thinking, I don't want my kid to end up like him. Yeah. <laughs> also, but well, I, I think, probably you know, one of the most smiliest and bubbliest guys I've met in like a long time, especially. No, please neither. Out of all your tics, Ryan, what would you, out of all your tics, motor and vocal, what would you say is your most upsetting tick or worst tick for you? Worst tick I've had is when I've gone to pull a hijab off a lady and tell her it's too warm for a scarf in summer. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst. With, uh, with the racist inappropriate tics and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm not racist. I, I accept everybody all shape, size, colour, beanie baby. I don't care what, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so, the vocal, the vocal ticks are... Uh, it's high bread. Mm. Yeah, uh, my, motor, my motor ticks, my worst motor tick. What's your worst motor tick? Um, it's probably the stomach cramps. Oh. It's bad, it's worse for the pain. Mm. Brilliant for the gain. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> A thousand crunches in one move, like... <laughs> exactly. I, I get... Yeah, it, it is. And then my pregabbling comes along and slows my metabolism down, and now I've got bigger tits than most girls that want to wear bikinis. So. <laughs> I, uh, my worst motor tick is dislocations in my legs and my back. So I'm uh, lucky enough not to dislocate anything. Yeah, I've broken <laughs> feet with the back. Yeah. But, I know. Mine are missing. <laughs> I've oh. got a thing of punching myself in the face and these yeah. like, all my glasses to the pound shot glasses because See. I break many. Uh, so oh. but, uh, when I say ticks, my vocal ticks, worst ones are when I when I tell people I hate them or like shout at the kids. Uh, yeah. they get they they're not bothered, they're just like Oh Yeah, cool. I'm I'm gonna carry on. It's <laughs> the best way. At least they understand, though, which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, we've got... Uh, my daughter's 16 this year. Uh, my son's 13. Uh, two youngest, 12 and 11. And so, like Charlie, the youngest one's never known anything other than Tourette's. So, yeah. Uh, but Harvey's, Harvey's the one who repeats quite a few of my tick back. But I think he's got echoralia because he's got uh, uh, AS, uh, autism. Oh, and OK. Where he repeats things, yeah, uh, huh? and doesn't know why he says them so. But he's not got he's not got Tourette's, but he, he does have echoralia, which, yeah. I'm, as far as I know, can exist. So I, I think it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think it exists outside that it it it's a subsidiary to different other neurological and like Ooh. areas of the brain. I mean, well, I, anything else that you wanted to cover while? Uh, we were on. Yeah. Oh, talks. Anything else you wanted to cover before our time uh, went? I, what, I, I literally just let the conversations breeze and flow mm -hmm. because I feel if we're more natural, yeah. then we're going to be yeah. more enticing and more ooh, people are going to feel more attracted to watch it rather than it being sort of like scripted and like... Just, no, no, just, no, good point, good point, yeah. Just, just let, let it flow. And I think we've done a brilliant job today. I've actually oh, enjoyed it. French man. <laughs> just literally... <laughs> flown right by. Um, yes. Have we done an hour? Yeah. It's going to be an hour five, in, in about five minutes and that, so, like, yeah. start wrapping it up. <laughs> right, so this is going to be put on your YouTube channel, is it? Yes, it is. It'll be up. I'll literally downloading this as soon as I come off um, <laughs> and done my checks and all that lot, and then it'll be on the Instagram TV thing where it'll be constantly right. on my Instagram. Um, I then download it. I then just need you to send me a selfie so I can do a thumbnail, yeah. and then woo, it'll be uploaded onto YouTube later on this evening. It takes right. about an hour or so to upload. This, is, this has been on. It's eleven years since my Tourette started, and they first started to display themselves at my best friend's funeral when he died. And uh, this, this is the guy, Mister oh. Bill. He's a handsome dude. Woo. And he's a good mate. 
and uh, I always have his picture by the side of my uh, thing, so I never forget him. And I've also got. You got his. Uh, his, his name tattooed on the back of my neck as well, so. Uh, I mean. Uh, I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that. That, that's, that, that, that. Like, I know we didn't get around like speaking about it properly, but that's. It's nice that you managed to keep him alive in your memory and, and, and all that lot, so. Yeah, I remember that being unemployable. Me and my dad was, at that point was even like, "That's mainly started because his best mate died," and I was like, "It must have been like an emotional turmoil." Obviously, I don't want to go into that now and all that like it's oh, it is a t touchy subject. And I know in in the uh, in the documentary, I managed to talk about it with, uh, and I've also talked about it with somebody from Great Orm Ormond uh, Hospital. And that you used to think physical trauma, head trauma, could bring it on if it was present. But they, they know they know now that emotional trauma is just as uh, dramatic and drastic, and can bring it on. And I firmly believe, you know, anything that affects us to that degree. Yeah. Uh, if, if if Tourette's is present, uh, it will bring it on. Yeah. You've got the seed, it only takes one droplet to, of water of, and that could be anything to make it grow. So Ooh. if it's already there, Tom is going to bring it out. <laughs> but it's been wonderful talking to you today and Ooh. I've really enjoyed it, trust me. Thank you very much, Ryan. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye and right. then Ooh. we will... Reconvene after this. If you can just send me a selfie of yourself. Yeah. Listen, yeah. big look from all, us all up here, all the Stevensons. And uh, say hi to Charlie for me. And and your mum as well, yeah. and your dad. Good luck with your sister. Can't and, wait. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and take care, bud. Look after yourself and stay healthy. I will. You too, man. Trust me. And then we'll promote the crap out of this video as well afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Right, brilliant. Well, thank you, Paul. Take care. See you later on, man. Bye. 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 Bye.